All right. So, CSLP 2018 Libraries Rock for Teen and Adults is what we'll, we'll be talking about today. I did do one for children and early literacy earlier. There's a few similarities, um, but there is also new information specific to teen and adults. So if you were here this morning, bear with me as we get through some of the repeat info. Um, and also, uh, hopefully my brain and my mouth will cooperate since this is my second webinar today. Um, all right, so let's get started. CSLP 2018 Libraries Rock. My name, if you missed it before, is Beth Yates. I'm the children's consultant at the Indiana State Library. And part of my duties is that I am also the Indiana State representative for the Collaborative Summer Library Program. That means that if you have any questions about summer reading generally, or uh, questions about the Collaborative Summer Library Program specifically, feel free to contact me. There's my email address. Of course, if you're from another state, you will contact your representative, which is often your uh, representative at a state library. Um, so if you have any questions that are not answered, we're going to talk, I'm going to show you anyway, where you can find information about the rules of use for artwork, for instance. Um, if you can't figure it out yourself, feel free to email me. I'll talk to the home office and see what we can find out for you. So what is the purpose of this training? Well, I divide it kind of into two parts. And the first part is a general overview of the CSLP 2018 program. That includes uh, the slogan, the artwork. Uh, we'll go over a little bit about the manual and how to navigate it and a little about reproducibles and other things that you'll find in the manual. The other part of this training is geared towards giving you guys some program ideas, some place to jump off of when you're starting to think of ideas uh, for uh, teen and adult programs this summer. So it's a very straightforward agenda. We're going to first do that overview of the program, and then we're going to talk about program ideas. And this is a really good time for me to mention that as I've been going around the state and doing these trainings in person, I have been collecting program ideas and I've been putting them into one Word document that I have put a PDF of on our website. So we have a document on our website that is full of program ideas. Um, I am going to show you towards the end of this training where you can access that and you can look at it at any time, and I continue to update it through March as I finish up my in-person trainings. Um, but I would love if we were able to do a roundtable type discussion in this webinar like we do at the in-person trainings and share lots of ideas. Unfortunately, it's just not, uh, not very simple to do. So since we can't do that, I'm gonna be asking you guys to share program ideas at the very end. I'm going to put up a box in the middle of the screen where you'll be able to type your idea. It'll be recorded, and then I will add that to my list of program ideas. So kind of uh, just said that to get your wheels spinning, start thinking about what you might want to share. Okay, so slogan for this year is Libraries Rock, and it is the slogan for all four age groups this year, just like Build a Better World was the slogan for all four age groups last year. That's a change from how it had been done for a number of years where there's a different slogan for each age group. I am also really pleased to say that we are officially only going to have one slogan for all age groups from here forward. Um, it was a little up in the air whether we were going to do that and the board of CSLP decided ultimately that that was the way uh, we would go. So I think this is great news. Uh, the best part of it is you can choose whichever artwork you like best or your library likes best and you don't have to worry about what the slogan is because the slogan is the same on everything. So when I think about programming in the summer, um, I, I try to figure out what are some connections that I can make between my programming and this year's slogan which of course is Libraries Rock. So I started thinking, what do I think of when I think of Libraries Rock? And the first one is the most obvious one because it's actually the official theme for this summer. 
Um, it's in all of the artwork. If you've been noticing, that connection is music. So this could be anything from singing, dancing, playing instruments, listening to music, expressing yourself, anything artistic can really fit with this music theme. Then I started thinking, what else does Libraries Rock represent to me? Well, when you say Libraries Rock, you're really saying libraries are awesome, right? So I came up with kind of a hooray for libraries sort of theme. Um, when I say hooray for libraries, I mean it's a really great summer to remind your community why libraries are great. All of the wonderful services that you offer. Um, it's a good summer to get out into the community, really engage, participate in community uh, activities and community efforts, get the name of the library out there, um, and just generally, you know, work in your community, maybe see if some of them will come in and do programs for you or partner with them for programs outside of the library. It's also a good summer to perhaps try to build your friends group or if you don't have one, consider starting one. When I was thinking of my last connection that I came up with, uh, it's really the most literal connection that there is. And as I've been going around doing trainings, I've actually found quite a few people are inspired by this for programming. We have quite a few program ideas related to it. And it is literally rocks. So rocks, science, geology, building things, anything to do with rocks, rocks, stones, uh, boulders, etc. Um, so those are the three that I came up with initially. If anybody else has some connections, like when you say the phrase, libraries rock, what do you think of? Do you think of anything besides music, how great libraries are, and physical rocks? If so, type it in that chat box um, and let us know. And I'm going to kind of keep going, but feel free to type as I talk. Oh, and I see some people typing, so that's always good. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the artwork really quickly. Here is the teen poster. Oh, Debbie Lynn says, libraries are in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cherise says she thinks of all the other things our libraries offer that the public doesn't realize we do, so that's why it's a great summer to remind the public of that. Okay, so the teen poster. Um, this one is bright and colorful. You've got kind of a book monster with uh, who's playing the guitar and he's got computer legs. You can see there's actually a library in the background. I don't know if you can tell, if you can read that. But it is definitely big, bold, and bright. I will add, I've had a few teen librarians say they don't think they're teens will think it's cool, they might think it's too young, and that very well may be the case. I've heard other teens, uh, teen librarians say that they think their teens will love it. So if you kind of take the graphic novel aspect, it kind of is graphic novel-y, I think, um, then maybe they will think it's cool. But it would also make a really great children's poster if your librarians, your children's librarians are not super excited about the artwork for the early literacy or children's program, this teen poster is an option. And if you don't like the teen poster for your teens, there is always the adult poster that you could just use for everybody. Um, this is kind of a general, just rock and roll sort of style with the winged guitar. You've got lots of books, of course, a computer, headphones, um, and it's just kind of a nice, simple, bold, kind of catchy design, I think. This artwork, both of them were done by Larry Jones. He is a freelance graphic artist, and he did last year's Build a Better World adult poster. So you can see he has very eclectic styles, um, and as a freelance graphic artist, uh, that makes sense. I'm just gonna glance back at my comments, and I saw somebody said, how about rocking chairs? Yes, absolutely, rocking chairs, that kind of rocking also works for sure. That's great. 
<laughs> Here is some of the teen artwork. Uh, these are some of the clip arts. They call it spot art. Um, just very lively, filled with action. And here is the adult artwork. I think they both look very similar. And in fact, it's hard to tell the difference between which one's teen and which one's adult. But really all that means is you can use it interchangeably. Just use the ones you like best. I do think the adult artwork tends to have a slightly more kind of tattoo-ish feeling. They kind of look like tattoos with the roses in the background behind them um, and the, the, the wings and things like that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the manual. Um, I say make sure you read it, and it's not because I expect anyone to read it front to back. It's way too long for that, probably. Uh, I know we're all busy, but what I do mean is make sure you at least glance at the teen and the adult section, whichever applies more to your position. Um, and at the very least, make sure you look at the table of contents. It's a great way, just at a glance, to kind of check it out and see if there's anything that looks good. Uh, I know I used to design programs or come up with programs when I was a children's librarian at a public library for 12 years. And I would often come up with my program but then need some supplemental materials. So I would go to the manual and lo and behold, they had maybe a game we could play or a quiz we could do, uh, a craft that would work with that program. So it's definitely beneficial uh, to take a look at it, even if you don't want to use the canned programs that they give you. Um, and if you're not familiar, the manual does contain full programs, um, from books to crafts to activities, depending on the age, of course. Now, this message is for Indiana librarians, but you should already have received by now your manual. It would have been on flash drive, and I have the flash drive circled on your screen right there. Um, they arrived in a padded envelope, or they should have, along with uh, these brochures. So on the right, you have your Upstart catalog. On the left, you have a Scholastic catalog. The flash drive itself was supposed to be within a little plastic baggie uh, with this yellow card that you see there and that whole baggie with the flash drive in it was stapled to a letter addressed to your director um, so these packages would have been delivered to your director by late November early early December at the very latest if you have not laid eyes on it yourself check with all of your coworkers there is a good chance occasionally a coworker will pick it up throw it on their desk forget to tell everybody else that they have it, um, and then everyone, you know, people don't know where it is. Similarly, if absolutely none of your coworkers have any idea where it is, make sure you've checked with your director because it should have gone to them initially. Um, if you can't find it, then you can contact me and we'll see what we can figure out. Um, Mary, I, I am afraid I don't know the answer to New York. T contact the New York Public Library, or I'm sorry, not New York Public Library, the New York State Library. Um, I'm not, we can figure out who your representative is of CSLP. If you go to your CSLP website, um, there's a list of the representatives there, so that's another way to figure out. But the manuals are available, so at the very least, you can order them off of the website if your state doesn't provide them. All right, so cslpreads.org is the website that I was just talking about, and it's www.cslpreads.org, up at the top of the screen there. And I'm gonna tell you now how you can access the catalog online, or the manual online, I'm sorry, and Mary, this might help you also. So when you go to the website, the first thing you have to do is log in. So up in the top right corner, I have already logged in. If I hadn't logged in, you would see, it would say uh, login slash register. So if you've never logged into it before, you'll need to register. It walks you through the process, and it does sometimes take a day or two uh, to get fully registered because the CSLP home office will have to verify that the library that you work at is a member of CSLP. Now, Indiana libraries, 
you are all members of CSLP. The state of Indiana, the uh, state library of Indiana pays for you to be a member. Um, so you should all have access. So once you get logged in, in order to access the manual, you'll go to proprietary downloads, kind of there in the center of the page, it's that black box. Here it is a little bit closer, proprietary downloads. And then the first thing you need to do is obtain an online access code. If you have not logged in uh, to the manual this year, you have to get a code the first time you do. Once you have the code, you're set for the rest of the season. So you'll walk through the process to get your code, and then finally you'll be able to get into the online manual. You just enter your code in there after you've logged in. Um, I was asked at the morning session today, can more than one librarian at a library have a login to CSLP to their website, and can more than one have a code to the manual? And I verified with the CSLP home office um, earlier this week, actually, just to make sure, and they said, yes, more than one person at a library can have that code. So that is my understanding currently. Um, if you have any issues or problems with that, just contact the CSLP home office. There's two people that work there and they are both wonderful, lovely people who will be more than happy to help you get logged in and get access to that manual, okay? All right, so if you do have your flash drive, when you stick it into your computer, this is what'll pop up. I know some of you are old pros at navigating this, but just in case we have any newbies, I'm gonna quickly go over it. Um, so this is what it'll look like, and those top four, as you go down, early lit, children's, teen, adult, those will lead you to those manuals on the flash drive. Um, the other thing we're gonna point out is number six, which is the art. That is all of your graphics, all of your art for this year. Last year, it was integrated in with the age level manuals. This year, it has its own folder. So just be aware it's all right there. The last thing I'm gonna point out here is the very bottom one says rules of use, and this is where you will find all of the legal information about how you can and can't use, for instance, the graphics. That tends to be the most, uh, the questions are mostly about how you can use the artwork. So most of your answers should be there. If you have any more questions or you can't find your answer, just let me know uh, and we'll get it figured out. Now, if I was to click on that early lit folder, it would take me into this. This is all of the early literature or early literacy information. You can see all of the files start with EL for early literacy. Um, and that top one is the manual itself. So if we click on that, it brings up the manual uh, broken down by section from cover, front matter, which is informational uh, on how to run a program, things like that. And then the individual chapters appendix and then the full manual. So if you don't want to have to go through each chapter individually, you can just go to the full manual. How to run a program. We are not really going to talk about that specifically today. And this, the sole reason is, or the simple reason, is just that if I was to ask each one of you how you run your summer reading program, I'm sure I would get a completely different answer from every one of you. There's just a million ways that you could potentially run a summer reading program. Um, if, however, you're looking to revamp the way you do it, or you've never done it before and you'd like just some basic information about how to do it, you can find it in the manual. So each age group, early literacy, children's, teen, and adult, has a section on how to plan a program. And of course, it features information specifically about that age group, but often it's general too. So, for instance, this is the child, or this is the teen chapter. My my bad. Um, and chapter two is planning a teen summer library program. So there you go. Um, also of note is that chapter one: why teens need summer programming. And this is a really great section if you're a teen librarian or a director, or really anybody, 
um, it's a good thing to be familiar with. It highlights all of the reasons, all of, all of the benefits of doing teen programming and doing summer reading for teens um, that are out there because there really are a lot of good benefits um, for teens, including socialization and um, just opportunities to, um, to learn more about themselves, to learn what they're good at, to learn what they're interested in. These are all things that teens are going through um, at, during these teenage years. Uh, they're figuring out who they are and what they want to do, and oftentimes programs at the library can help them do that. All right, let's move on to chapter headings. Um, and we'll just go over these real quick because they, they give you a clue as to what is inside um, a particular chapter, what kind of programs you're going to find. Now, each chapter in the teen and the adult section has a title, and then there's a group of programs that are at least loosely related to that title that you can find in there. As I said, they're usually complete programs. Um, they're also oftentimes display ideas. And then at the end of those chapters is usually reproducibles, um, which you can find in the forms and handouts section of the, of the flash drive um, that supplement those program ideas. So for instance, there might be a crossword puzzle or a match game that goes with a particular program. So let's start with the teen chapter headings. And the first chapter is World Beats. And this one really talks a lot about world music. So there's, for instance, a world music trivia game. Um, there's a display idea for well-known world musicians. So for instance, Bob Marley, things like that. Music in motion. This one's really kind of the act of making music. And so there's a musical sing-alongs, so singing along to musicals program. There is one that I think sounds super fun, is a fandom karaoke program. Fandom karaoke being karaoke that's centered around a particular thing that people are huge fans of. Um, and in this case, it's a Hamilton karaoke program, Hamilton the Musical which I don't know about you, but every teen and adult that I know is super into Hamilton, as well as my 10-year-old. Um, there is, the next chapter is Behind the Scenes. This one contains quite a few different uh, programs, but an example of one is a Foley filmmaking contest. So if you're not familiar, a Foley artist is the person who makes the sound effects in a movie. So if there's someone walking, they're the ones who make the shoe sounds on the pavement. If there's rain, they have to make the rain noise. They have to reproduce that sound. So the contest for the teens is that they make a short video, and then they have to add in their own Foley artist, their own Foley sounds that they have come up with. Next chapter is Change is Gonna Come. And this one is music from different time periods. So there's lots of fun programs here. Um, there's also a bingo game centered around different genres of music. So not only time periods, but also genres. And then the last chapter is sound, body, and mind. And this one is centered around mental health, exercise, um, just general health-centric programs. So for instance, there is a rock stacking program. Um, rock stacking is something that people do to kind of meditate. Um, oftentimes you'll see stacks of rocks on the beach or in the desert or any other place where you find lots of rocks. And it's just kind of a way to focus. Um, and so there's a program about that. There's another suggestion for teens to make playlists based on particular moods. So a happy playlist of songs, a sad playlist, maybe a romantic playlist, things like that. Moving on to the adult chapter headings. The first one is Muse and Music. 
So lots of fun ones in this one too. Uh, one of them is to do a musical instrument checkout. And there are lots of ways you can make that work from maybe working with a local music store to here in Indiana, uh, the Hagerstown Public Library actually loans ukuleles. So that is something to consider. Maybe you start doing that this summer. Um, they have quite a collection at this point, but you could start with one or two and they're not overly expensive. Um, just give them uh, or put them in a bag with um, some how to play the ukulele books and they're pretty easy to figure out how to play. Creative composition is the next chapter and one of my favorite ideas from this chapter is listening parties. So it's kind of like a book club but it's for music. Um, you listen to selections of music and then you discuss. Lots of ways you can do that one too. Either people bring music in and you take turns listening to their music or maybe you pick a time period or a genre of music or a style or an artist and maybe you assign them to listen to, to albums. I mean so many ways you could do that but really it's just bringing together people to talk which a lot of adults are looking for that experience. Speaking of experience, that's the name of our next chapter. Um, this one is just physically experiencing music. So one of the ideas is a dance lesson program. Um, dance lessons, you know, maybe invite in your local dance studio. Uh, could be a certain style of dance that you're teaching. Could be uh, ballroom dancing, whatever you have available to you in your community. Decades of Music is the next one. And this one centers, of course, around decades of music. So there's a trivia night that focuses on that. There's also an idea for a decades party. Um, and then the last chapter is Play, Listen, Learn. And it is where you will find programs for families um, or all ages. Um, so ideas there include a family music game night where you, maybe you play name that tune, uh, family dance party, music lessons for beginners, things like that. <laughs> Karen says pole dancing, LOL. <laughs> yeah. Um, Talk to your director about that one, but maybe. They do do an exercise version of that now. <clears throat> Other general program advice that I've come up with, just a couple of things. The first one is, when I was at my public library, I know that I was usually more concerned with doing programs that I knew the public would want to come in for than I was concerned about uh, programming to a theme. So, you know, I, of course we had our overall, we would use CSLP for our overall summer reading theme, but when it came to individual programs, I didn't worry about it so much. If that is the case for you, I think, you know, there's no problem with that at all. Um, but if you do want to make whatever programs you are thinking about fit in with the theme, you could just add the words rock or rocks after it and boom, you've got a program that fits the theme. So an example of that would be maybe you want to do a coding program for your teens. Just call it Coding Rocks and then all of a sudden it fits with the theme. Um, if you want to do a quilting program for your adults, Quilting Rocks right there. Another tip is to make sure you're playing music during programs this summer. I know a lot of us do that already maybe after story time while, while you're doing the craft make sure you're playing music um, same thing with adults and teens though if you're doing any sort of craft or any sort of program where there's not someone uh, that you need to focus on who's speaking of course background music is wonderful and then finally the last thing I want to emphasize is once again, make sure you're looking out into your community, get inspired by them, see what small businesses there are who might wanna come in and do a free program for you. A lot of times if you let them put their information out, you know, you're not exchanging, they're not exchanging money with patrons or anything, 
they're just sharing the information about their business they're more than willing to come and get some free publicity by doing a program at the library and then that makes them aware of you as well as making your patrons aware of them so it's kind of a you know it's it's good both ways all right are there any questions before we move on to talking about programming I know I threw a lot of information out at you guys um, and see if anybody nobody is typing currently so I think that we'll keep moving just to make sure we have plenty of time to talk about programs but if you do have questions go ahead and type them and I will try to get back to them later okay so let's talk program ideas we're gonna start with just a few all ages and family program ideas because there are some programs that just work for any age um, this could be one that you do for all ages or it could be one that you do individually for teens and then you also do it for adults for instance um, so the first one is and I did mention this this morning too because I love the Beatles um, June 25th is global Beatles day so there are so many programs you could do centering around the Beatles from dance parties to listening parties you could potentially screen one of their movies if you have the right license um, you could do a trivia contest you could do a, like where you listen to the music and have to name that well name that tune I guess is what it is called name that tune program with them you could do a Beatles wig contest who has the best Beatles wig um, or can make their own hair into a Beatles wig that would be good lots of hairspray there um, so anyway if you're interested in doing a program about the Beatles the global Beatles Day does have a website just Google global Beatles Day and uh, you can pull that up and see what they suggest another good program that any age can do is rock art um, of course I know that rock painting is super popular very very popular right now and that is another great one but this is uh, a different type of art with with rocks you purchase really smooth small stones from any craft store and then you glue them on using your glue of choice to probably a uh, foam board or some sort of uh, cardstock that's a little heavier would work best and uh, would work better than just a piece of paper um, and then you can draw a little scene um, it could really be made into anything I saw one where you can make it into like a tree with a little bird sitting on the tree limb and the bird is actually a little rock um, lots of different things you can do this is a great one uh, as with everything else check out Pinterest for a myriad of more ideas along this theme oh thank you Mary Claire for sharing that information about a Beatles scholar who does lots of Beatles programs yeah that's great and that also reminds me you know there's lots of Beatles impersonators out there so if your library has a little money um, maybe maybe you have them come to a concert for you um, of course any sort of fitness uh, yoga Zumba uh, martial arts dancing those are always popular programs again they're great ones to partner with your community on and easy ones to name because it's just Zumba rocks dancing rocks um, yoga rocks um, you could do a retro gaming night that's for all ages maybe parents who were children when they uh, children during the 80s and 90s and 70s who play video games still might appreciate coming and bringing their kids um, Atari has made a an Atari flashback I think it's called and Super Nintendo also has or Nintendo has another one also I, I believe it's called Super Nintendo with the retro older games on it so I don't think they're overly expensive or maybe one of your staff members has one you can borrow um, but you do that maybe you listen to some 80s music have a nice game night for families 
a few teen specific ideas. Um, and actually this one could be all ages also. Adults could absolutely do this. And in fact, um, it might be a good one for adults too. Okay, bear with me. This one involves fire. <laughs> this one, you use alcohol ink and then you set it on fire to create these beautiful designs on tiles or on glass. And I believe it's just called fired, F-A-R-E-D, fired, alcohol, ink is what you would search for to find different projects. Um, I have put a link, or I will put a link on our Pinterest board, but Pinterest definitely has quite a few, um, quite a few ideas for how to do this. Um, essentially, you, you use the alcohol ink, which you can make yourself or you can buy. You put drops of it all over the thing and then you set it on fire. The alcohol, it's rubbing alcohol, burns off. Uh, it's usually a fairly low flame unless you've just drenched it. Um, and then you're left with this beautiful design, this beautiful pattern. Kind of deepens the colors. Um, now, of course, there are safety concerns with this program, but one library in Indiana, Osgood Public Library, has done a couple of these programs for varying age groups with a lot of success. Um, and they did, uh, they have done it outside, which your director might be more comfortable with, um, but what, they did do it inside too. So, you know, obviously, consult with your director, make sure they're okay with it, you have to put it in a metal tray, um, make sure that the teens are being well supervised, maybe you control the fire stick, uh, don't let them. Um, and But otherwise it's really cool and it certainly brings a lot of people in because who isn't intrigued by something involving fire? Okay, so teens still really love zombies and so you can do a zombie makeup program and then you can step it up a notch by making that into a zombie prom. Uh, just keep the library open after hours and you know after you do everybody's makeup then you turn on the music and you can dance and eat food and have fun. Another idea that a library here in Indiana has done is a zombies in the stacks program and this is kind of a zombie tag slash zombie hide and seek program. Um, you turn off all the lights in the library after hours, you have your teens in their makeup, and then they get to try to find one another and turn each other into zombies. And the zombies have to drag one foot behind them. So I think that one is sounds really fun. Um, but anytime you can keep the library open late for teens is usually a good fun time. Another thing you can do is a teen jam session or a band night. So if you have local teens who play music, who are musicians, maybe some of them play the guitar, or drums, um, and they don't have other people to play with, invite them in to just jam together, to try stuff out. Um, on the other hand, if you do have a couple of local teen bands, maybe you invite them in to do a concert for you. They probably don't have a lot of places in your town where they can perform because they can't really go into bars, um, right? So, so maybe they'll do a concert for you at the library. Another idea that someone mentioned at a training last week was to invite a DJ in. So we're talking really like a wedding DJ, somebody who does local special events. Um, but a radio DJ could potentially be good too if you have a local radio station. They can come in, talk about their equipment, talk about their job, how they got into their career. It's kind of a career talk of sorts. But then also a chance for the teens to try out uh, and see what it's like to be a DJ. Um, really, you could expand this to any sort of artistic related job or any job. But, you know, invite artists, um, invite other musicians, talk about what they do uh, and how they got into it. All right, let's do adult programs now. And the first one I have is an idea that I got from the Greensburg Decatur Public Library here in Indiana. And this, they call it Cook the Book. And it's very, very popular at Greensburg. Um, the idea in general is 
that it's more than just a regular cooking program. Cooking programs are fantastic. Don't get me wrong. They are very popular, um, but they did a spin on it. So the idea is that people check out cookbooks and it could be cookbooks that are curated by the librarian on a specific theme, a specific uh, country's cuisine, whatever. Or it could be just randomly picked. So they check out the cookbooks, they take them home, they cook from it for a couple of weeks, and then they come back to the library for the actual program. And at the program, the librarian usually makes one dish for everybody to share and eat while they talk. And then they just go around and they talk about the cookbook that they had and they talk about the dishes that they liked or maybe that they didn't like. Um, and she says that the adults in her community really crave this social interaction. There's not a lot of places where you can just go and talk to other adults. And so um, it's been just enormously popular. Um, I know they, they reach their limits in terms of uh, signups, I think, each time. So. I love that idea. Oh, yay, Lacey. <laughs> Did I explain it correctly, I hope? Uh, another idea for adults is trivia. Uh, trivia is super fun. You can, of course, do it in the library. This summer, not only could you do uh, literature trivia, but you could do music trivia. It would be perfectly appropriate and perfect. Um, but you can do it in the library, but what could be extra fun is partnering with a local bar or a local restaurant to see if you could do it there. Again, you're getting your name out into the community. You're working with somebody else in the community. Um, wouldn't you love it if you were at a bar or at a restaurant and you looked over and there was a group of people having a lot of fun and you were like, what is that? And they said, oh, the library is here doing trivia. Wouldn't that be cool? So I think that's super fun. And the thing that gave me this idea to go out is that my old library, Johnson County, does something called Stout Stories, where they hold a book club each month at a local brewery or winery. Um, and it has been extremely popular, too. Um, one more idea for adults is you know, I already mentioned a listening party, but another idea could be a CD or an album exchange. I know my husband and I have a million CDs sitting in a big bin because we transfer all of our music to our uh, electronic devices. Um, and so I don't see why, you know, some people might be willing to bring their old CDs in and do an exchange with other people. Maybe check out some new music. Okay, so where can you find all these ideas? I said I have been accumulating all of these ideas and I've been keeping them in a list. Um, I call it my program idea sheet. You can find it on our website, which is www.in.gov library. And uh, there's the address again at the top. If you didn't catch that, you can also just Google Indiana State Library. That works too. Uh, when you get to the home page, over on the left-hand side is in Menu, and you'll see Services for Libraries there. When you click on that, it brings you to this page that you see right in front of you, Services for Libraries. At the top of the page, there's a box. On the left, it says Professional Development, and on the right, it says Library Development. You're going to find what I have on the left because I am in the Professional Development Office, and you can remember that because I give trainings, which is Professional Development. If you look down, I have circled resources for librarians serving youth. Now, I know you guys, teen and adult librarians primarily, but all of the summer reading stuff, because it's under my responsibilities, is under the serving youth section. So you're going to click on that. Brings you up to the resources for librarians serving youth page. And the second section down is the Collaborative Summer Library Program section. So the first link is the CSLP website. Um, you can also just Google Collaborative Summer Library Program to get to that too. Um, the second two links have to do with our teen video contest. And 
let me just take a sidetrack for a second because I have some teen librarians here, so I have to advertise. Um, so every year, CSLP does a teen video challenge. The idea is that a teen or a small group of teens work together to make a 30 to 90 second video that is centered around that year's slogan and theme. And of course, this year, that would be their interpretation of libraries rock. So they make this video, they turn it into me, and the state library representatives from my office uh, will judge a winner, and they only compete against other Indiana library teams. So they're not competing nationally, they're only competing against other Indiana libraries. The winner gets, the winning video gets $100. That is $100 for um, the participants to split. So if there's more than one, they will have to share the money. Um, but it's still 100 bucks. Pretty cool. Um, and then the, the uh, library from whence the winning teens came, they get a small prize from Upstart, a small gift certificate. I can't remember if it's 25 or 50, my apologies, but you know you can use that towards some prizes or some other materials from Upstart. So if you have any teens at your library who you think would be good for this, maybe you have a, an advisory group, maybe you just have some enthusiastic teens, set them loose on this, let them give their interpretation of Libraries Rock, and it's due to me. Uh, you just put it on YouTube. You can make it protected if you want to, so nobody else can see it but people who have the link. You send it to me. You send me the paperwork that goes with it, which you can find right here on this page. And um, we pick a winner, and you're done. Just has to be here by the end of February. Um, one other thing I'll add is in the past few years, we've only had two libraries enter, so your odds are very good. So <laughs> I hope that that encourages you to talk to your teens and get them to participate. Okay, um, and then the very last link there is CSLP 2018 Program Ideas for All Ages. When you click on that, that takes you to the list right there. And this, I did a screenshot and it cut off, so sorry. It doesn't go all the way down, but um, this is what it'll look like. This is the front page. You'll note that it says additional resources for CSLP planning, and you'll find quite a few useful resources and links right there. And then as you scroll down, you'll find the actual program ideas. They are divided by age group. There's all ages, preschool, children, teen, and adult. They are otherwise not in order, though. So they're in the age group, but they're not in order after that. So it's really intended as kind of a look through it, try to get inspired. Um, it's just general ideas for possible programs. If you are looking for something specific, you can search. You hit Control F, and then a little box will pop up near the bottom of your screen usually, and you just type in your keyword, and it will highlight that word in the document. But um, otherwise, just browse it for inspiration. Oh, Stephanie says $50 from Upstart. Thank you very much. Great, awesome. Um, and then one other thing I want to point out is that I do have a Pinterest page for CSLP 2018 Libraries Rock, and I have been trying to put some teen and adult related things in here too. Um, so check that out if you're looking for ideas. And of course, just Pinterest generally. Any of these ideas that are on the sheet, any of these ideas we've talked about today, Pinterest is, of course, a wonderland for finding great ideas for crafts and things, so don't forget about that one. Um, you can get to this particular Pinterest board by going to this uh, Indiana State Libraries page, um, Pinterest page, or it's also linked from these additional resources for CSLP planning, so you can get to it from there as well. 